I think one of the big things on that taking ownership is for people to realize, because there's people that are listening to this right now and they're in that space. They are playing the victim, especially amidst this crisis that the world is in. Uh, maybe they lost their job. Maybe they've been furloughed. Maybe their spouse lost their job. Maybe you know they're dealing with a, a health concern with someone in their family. And it's very, very, very easy to start letting that victim mentality seep in. But when I look at you know, taking ownership of your life and realizing everything is your fault. It's really this realization that, you know, as long as you keep your fingers pointed at other people and placing the blame on other people, it's literally like you're taking the keys to your handcuffs and just giving it to them. And not until you take those same fingers and point them back at yourself, are you able to take those, those keys back and break free? And so many people right now, they're putting the blame on the government. They're putting the blame on the virus. They're putting the blame on their employer. They're putting their blame on all these external things and are completely neglecting the only thing that you can control, which is yourself. I hope everyone listening knows that to try to control someone else, that's probably, it's impossible. (laughs) And it's probably the source of 90% of anxiety. And frustration. And frustration. Yeah. Yep. So So control what you can control. And that's you. You are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And it is all your fault. Like it's, it's a sum total of all the decisions that you've made, good or bad. But I think a lot of, to your point, a lot of what people try to do is they try to control the things that they can't control. And that's where the frustration, that's where the depression, that's where the anxiety, because they're so focused on the things that are out of their control Instead of just focusing on like, what can I do today right. to get better? And then just go do that and, and understand that if you focus on the things that you can control, then all the other stuff that you can't control will fall into place. And most people just never get there mentally. And so for me, that was probably the biggest eye-opening experience is realizing that it's really not what happens to you. It's how you respond to it. And you have the ability to respond in any way you want. I mean, if you think that responsibility is the ability to respond. So whatever's happening to you in your life right now, you have the ability to respond. And that's a choice. That's an action that you have to take. No, it's not easy to respond in a, in a positive manner, but nothing in life is easy. That's worth it. I think it all boils down to identity and what people find their identity in. And the reality is there are a lot of people, maybe a majority of people that find their identity in what they do and not who they are. And so whether that means connecting more on the relationship side or whether it's just being able to tap into a greater understanding of who you are outside of the things that you do on a daily basis, uh, I think that's gonna be huge. Um, Because when things are taken away from you like a job okay, I used to go and hammer this nail into this board every single day, now I can't do that. Well, what was it about that that made me feel productive? And what else can I do to get that same feeling um, you know, without it being the exact same thing? But I think the real problem and the real um, situation is for people to really understand who they are uh, because they weren't the hammer. They weren't the guy that does that. That just happened to be something that they do, but that's not who they are. And so I think it's a really good time for people to reflect on, you know, who am I? It's a very difficult question. Uh, but if people can tap into that, then I think that's where the fulfillment, the passion, the enjoyment of life will come from. Um, and I think it gives people, honestly, a, a huge opportunity to kind of clean slate it and look at, okay, I have no job now. What type of job, what kind of career, what type of things would I enjoy doing? Maybe I should try to do that instead of going back to something that I hate again or that I don't like again or that I had to deal with all these things that brought stress into my life. If you look at life giving versus life draining, what would be a more life giving thing for me to spend a huge amount of time in my life on versus just trying to find something very similar to what they were doing before? I think life is simple. Mm -hmm. And I I did not say easy. I do not believe life is easy. I believe life is simple. Mm -hmm. And if I had to boil it down to one simple equation, and you may take exception with this, okay? But think about it before you argue the other side. (laughs) Very few people ever have a problem getting 
what they really want from life. And it's about the same as the people who really decide what they want in life. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask the average person, what's your goal? What's your, what do you want to accomplish in life? I want to be happy. Be happy. I want to be successful. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so most people never clearly define exactly what they want in life and put it on paper. Mm -hmm. That's why I say very few people ever have a problem getting what they want if they clearly define it. So what do you want? What, what do you want in your life? What is the life that you ultimately want to live? What does it look like? And then take yourself through this process where you dig deeper and deeper and deeper in that. Keep asking yourself why. What does that look like? Why do I want like that? And what does that specifically look, at, look, look like? And just get clear layer by layer by layer into what ultimately you want your life to look like and then design a path to get there. One thing that, you know, not to drop Tom Shea's name again, but I was having, I had an amazing conversation with him yesterday and he really has this kind of like five point plan in the very last part, which would be, you know, the least important is the why you're doing it. And it starts with B, which is who am I? So it goes from who am I to what do I need to the team, which is who do I associate with, then the action plan, then the why. It's my belief that the vast majority of influencers live in the action plan and why. Action plan and why. You know, whether it's Simon Sinek that started this or not, everyone felt, follows suit and it's all about, well, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Start with your why. You got to know why you're doing it. And then let's put an action plan for the why. But if you don't know who you are, there's nothing else. Yeah. So uh, as a challenge to the people that are listening to this, you know, that, that phrase, I am blank and there's multiple is the most important thing that you can really get a grasp of and everything else will follow after that. So once you realize like I am a creator, I am unbreakable, I am a leader, I am whatever that is for that person. Then let's take a basic example. I'm a runner. Well then on the do, I, I run, I train and for it to be so dialed in and it's easy for athletes and for artists. Like if I'm a painter, of course I paint, if I'm a runner, I run, but to create that similar dynamic, when you ask a runner, like, you know, why are you, why are you doing all these crazy miles every week? Like, why do you do that? It's like, cause I'm a runner. Well, what does that mean? If your, I am is I'm a leader, right? What are those things that you do that if someone asked you, well, man, why did you spend six and a half hours till 9.45 p.m. last night at your office calling all of your agents? Because I'm a leader. That's what leaders do. And then from there on to the people that you associate with, then your action plan and then the why. But the why ties back to where it all starts with who you are. <laughs>